What's up, coaches? Welcome back to the podcast. Today we have Saul Isaacson Hurst. He's the owner of mypersonalfootballcoach.com. He is an international trainer. He's worked with some of the top professionals in the world, and he's worked with several youth academies that are tied to the English Premier League. There's so much to learn in this interview. He talks about how he started his one-on-one training business and how he expanded that into an online virtual training business. So if you are a trainer, pay close attention to this uh, interview. I think you can learn so much with just how he thinks, how he operates, um, and he shares a lot of wisdom in this interview. Uh, started, started coaching really properly after university. Went to America for a couple of years to do... Um, just coaching in, uh, you know, a coach in America, basically, soccer coaching. So I didn't know what to do after uni. I was captain of the university team. A friend of mine had gone out there. So I went out there originally for a summer, and that's been two years in America. I really loved it. Coaching every day, all different age groups, a lot of time on the grass, really sort of honed my skills as a coach, learnt, really, you know, taught me, you know, pretty much the, the basis of a lot of what I know. Uh, while I was out there, you know, everyone in America does privates, as they call it, like, individual training. So when I came back to England, sort of brought that with me. I mm-hmm. uh, started a company called PDA Football and was started doing some camps and stuff. And then quickly realized that it was a real saturated market. You know, you're competing with a lot of like clubs and mm-hmm. that sort of thing and problems with, you know, venue hire and nightmares like that. And I was just thought this was a bit, just wasn't really working then. Uh, then, but the, my, the the individual stuff, my one to one stuff, was really picking up. So I just I just sort of pivoted to really focus on that, really, and I sort of became, you know, carved that niche out and uh, became yeah. quite good at it. Became known as like getting a lot of players signed to academies, uh, and, you know, and then got a job at Tottenham as well. I worked my way up into the academy and then spent six years there, and then four and a half years at Chelsea as like an individual skill specialist, while always doing an individual coaching, mm-hmm. uh, and then. Um, about five, six years ago, I started my personal football coach, which is just really an extension of PDA football. PDA football is really individual one-to-one coaching. My personal football coach is like online, you know, an app, basically. We started off as well as like an app, like remote, online, individual coaching. So, you know, specifically for individual players. Mm-hmm. And then um, I left Chelsea just to really focus on the business uh, because I was too busy because I was traveling a lot around the world. I couldn't really commit. And um, now, obviously, my personal football coach used all around the world, tens of thousands of users, clubs such as Arsenal, Wolves, Middlesbrough, um, West Brom, Birmingham, several other clubs using hundreds of grassroots clubs around the world use it, and obviously uh, individuals and, and that sort of thing. So now I pretty much do that. I do a lot of consultancy as well with clubs through the app, and uh, I still have a small client base of individual staff, mostly pros and uh, aspiring academy players. So... Is, is are most most of your clients in person or are they they remotely on <laughs> through the app? No, no, the app's the, work, the app is basically you know you, you sign up. It's a free app. You can use it for free, and you download all the challenges, and you can you can then you know buy courses on there and stuff like that. So I don't work online with players. It's just you go there and you download the practices and you train by yourself basically. And there's lots of different things in there. The stuff mm-hmm. I do individually with players is still you know in person when I do it. Perfect. Excellent. So you that have been coaching at quite quite a, a high level um, and for a while now, what would you say a really good quality private training session looks like? Uh, listen, I mean, it's just like any like any, like a team session, really. I mean, um, you know, you got to try and engage the player. A lot of it's about tempo. Um, you know what I mean by that is that you know making sure it's really you know, the speed of the, the progressions and the player never gets opportunity to get bored. You know you you got to train particularly when you train individually at high intensity, mm-hmm. particularly if you're a better better player because you know you don't have that opposition, so you really got to challenge yourself in other ways. So that's really about uh, speed and spaces and stuff like that. So in terms of what it looks like, I mean you know the main thing of you know I you know I'm a big advocate of trying to link it to the game as much as possible, make it position specific or make it you know. For example, if I'm doing receiving or turning or dribbling, it generally ends with a shot or a pass or something like that. Don't mm-hmm. lose, I don't use ladders because I think they're a gimmick. I think, you know, if you look at the highest level in every academy, no one uses ladders anymore. Do you know what I mean? They're, you know, so they're just a gimmick for social media. So if you're serious about training, you know, throw it away, ladders away and look, you know, work with the ball all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm in England, but I'm just out here doing some consultation and a few other things out here in Thailand. I travel around the world quite a lot, obviously pre-COVID all the time, and now I'm just uh, obviously just did here, so doing a bit of a couple of things out here, and obviously running the app from out here as well. I'll be back in England in the next month. Okay, perfect. So, 
how, how have you seen private training on your travels? Like, is it growing worldwide? Yeah, it's grown everywhere. And it's funny because even like in England, like, you know, when COVID struck, it was almost like everyone became an individual trainer because, mm. and that was maybe out of necessity because, you know, a lot of coaches were out of work. Um, you know, a lot of people, you're only allowed to train individual stuff, that sort of stuff. And then there's just been a massive, you know, explosion in individual training all around the world, basically, man, mm. you know, everyone's, everyone does it. And, you know, it's good, good you know, and, you know, because it's, an additional way to, you know, to your coaches to get income. Do you know what I mean? Mm, so yeah. there's a lot, you know, there's so many individual clubs and there's a lot of good people out there and there's a lot of clowns out there as well. I mean, as in any industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So let me take you back to, to when you first started your business then. Uh, how, how long have you been in business at the moment? Uh, about 20 years. 20 years. So when you first started, what, what was your biggest obstacle? Like anything, I remember, yeah, it's, I mean, it's like any business, like any any products, it's brand awareness, isn't it really? It's getting your brand out there. Mm -hmm. So particularly when I first started, to give an example, so for example, you know, I've luckily traveled around the world, but I mean, you know, when I was at Tottenham in my early days, I was, you know, contacting a lot of clubs and people in around the world and saying, look, I want to come out and do camps there and we're negotiating and, you know, people were saying, well, what's PDA football? And I was lucky because I was at Tottenham, so I was selling the brand, but it was difficult because I couldn't directly sell the brand because, you know, allowed to, because obviously, you know, you get in trouble. And then, well, actually, yeah, it was in Thailand, actually, first time I came out here. The guy who was, was uh, I was doing a camp with said he wasn't going to sell the brand, but then put the, the Tottenham logo all over the uh, the flyers and actually got like a, 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 a written warning, a verbal warning, because obviously that, and I didn't, but that's just reality. That stuff happens. So, that's a, to the trick, so the tricky thing was for me was that, you know, I was a very experienced coach and working with top players, working at a top academy. Um, but it was almost you got to try and sell that indirectly, you know. And, that, you know, my USP, obviously, even now is that, you know, my background at working at Chelsea and Tottenham and obviously Arsenal do some stuff as well and consult consultation. But now I've managed to build over, like, you know, many years, my brand, and my USP that I can sell myself through my personal football coach, you know, mm. if that makes sense. So, so like any business is about getting out there, getting brand awareness, getting people to product. And also, you know, remember 20 years ago, a lot of people were saying, like, individual training, what's that? You know, that mm. doesn't make sense. It was a big sort of information gap because there wasn't you know, that many of us out there doing it, really. So that was another challenge just to try and introduce it to people, say, actually, this is what you do. You know, you know you've got a talent. You know, if you want to, you know, you want your kid to get better at maths, you might send them back to a maths tutor. You want to get a better football center, to like a football trainer. Okay, yeah, perfect. Perfect. So how do you build those partnerships with those those big clubs? Because I'm sure a lot of trainers watching this will be thinking the same. How can I build a partnership with a, a big brand? Yeah, I mean, that's the reality. That's, you know, that's, that's you, know, you know, for example, Arsenal's only, they, they, they're only using my app because they trust me to, you know, I'm doing consultation with them and I'm going in there and supporting their coaches and working with their players. And in, they're, they're, they, they trust me because I've had 20 years in the industry because of my back, my track record of working with the, you know, the best academies and with the best players. So there's no shortcuts to that. Do you know what I mean? So mm. that's taken a lot of time. It's a lot of time to do that build up and build my reputation through that. And that's why now they trust me to do that, to, to, you know, they trust me to come in and work with their players and for my personal football coach to be their choice. So mm. it's a long road, basically. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you can't do it overnight and, you know, you just got to keep working away, building yourself up, keep, you know, building your own CV and developing mm. yourself and then developing your own brand as well. Mm -hmm. So essentially when you, when you go into a club, uh, how does it work then? Do, do, do you give players access to, to the app or how, how does that, that plan out then? Yeah. So, yeah. So basically like a club partnership, you know, a pro club looks a bit different to a grassroots club. Cause like I say, we've got over a hundred grassroots clubs around the world using it, but generally, yeah. So the club will go in, we give all the players access to the app. The app is white labeled, so it's got the logo on stuff like that. But the big clubs like Arsenal and that, I'll go in and I'll, I'll film their players doing the technical challenges in the Arsenal kits, and then we post those, and then kids can you know download them and then upload their own challenges and stuff like that. And mm. you know, and then also do stuff maybe with the coaches in terms of session design and how to maximise ball mastery on one v one and that sort of thing. So it looks different in all different environments, but I mean that really gives you a little bit of a taste of it. So a lot of coaches that we work with, they 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 want to start their own app. Like that's, that seems to be like the trend at the moment. Everyone needs to have an app to be successful. What's your opinion on that? Do you need an app to be, to be a successful private trainer? Uh, it depends what the app is. And it's like, you know, it's, it's some, you know, it's like, 
everyone's got wants to, everyone's everyone's releasing app now. But my question would be like, why am I going to you know give you know the old dog and duck app? You know, why am I going to if I'm a parent or you know I say to everyone like, what why am I downloading the app? Do you know what I mean? So that's why it's important you build your own brand. What's your USP like? Every man and his dog's got you know an app these mm-hmm. days. Software companies are ripping off my idea, you know, producing apps and just you know calling it another name. But yeah. but the problem is they can't rip off my USP. They can't rip off me and my experience. So like mm-hmm. clubs don't trust them because they're just it's another just another app. So I think mm-hmm. you've got to, apps are always good and they're always useful. It depends how you utilize them. But if you're looking at you know mass market, you've got to first try and build your brand and build your own identity because yeah. you know what's you know that guy in Australia or here in Thailand or wherever in Delhi, like, why are they going to download that app? Why are they going to trust you with their, their development or their kids' development? Because, you know, then you're just, you know, maybe you don't have that identity yet. So I think it's important to first build up your experience, your identity, and then then you're, then you're saying, okay, this is what you're bringing to the table, unless you've got an amazing app, which is like AI or something, or something like that, you know what I mean? And listen, there are some you know, good trainers out there who are doing some really good things, and I know they've got some apps out as well. Mm-hmm. Love that. So let, let me take you back 20 years ago then. Uh, how, how did you get your first client then? Um, I, what, uh, well, my first, when I was in America, I got my first client. This is someone who asked me. I was coaching. and I was working for a company. Obviously, you weren't allowed to. We just did it. And, you know, they chuck you 50 bucks. And I was like, wow, 50 bucks. You know, it's drinking money. It's great. So when I came back to England, it was like, um, I think... Uh, yeah i think because i started off running camps and then someone asked me through that and then i started advertising and sort of it was you know it sort of filtered through that and then word of mouth was always the most effective way of getting new business you know as probably as it always is unless you you know talk really about mass market uh, advertising selling but i mean yeah so then it's just sort of built gradually from that people come back say look he's doing a really good job and you know you build up from that way really Mm -hmm. and what would you look for when you bring on a new client into your, your your business well, it depends because obviously now, really, reality is, you know, w- when I'm working individually with players, I'm only really working with pros and that sort of thing. And, you know, players who are at the highest level because obviously that's because mm. I have a very, I don't have an infinite time to dedicate to it. I mean, but in terms of like when I'm just working with clubs, I mean, that sort of thing, you know, it has to be white. You know, they, you know, they, it depends because my first thought coach is a bit different if they're coming in looking at clubs and then you know there's a club got the philosophy they want to use it that sort of thing mm. so you work with players at a, like quite a high level how how do you keep a, a client accountable for their own development when they're away from you yeah i mean listen the reality is at the very highest level it's a challenge to you know it's a, ch- it's a challenge to put extra work in because the demands of the modern game at the highest level are so high so they've got to do what they do, what they can do. You know, they've got to keep on reflecting, you know, looking what they're doing, look what's going well, and just try and work as hard as much as hard as possible and try and squeeze as much in as they can, basically. I mean, listen, the proof's always in the pudding. You know, I mean, if you're in the first 11 and you're doing well and, you know, people are talking about you, then things are going well. You know, and then that's very easy for that to shift and go the other way. And then I think that's the time you've got to try and think about, right, maybe reevaluate, take a breath, think about what was I doing well previously? What can I then do well now? What can I work on? Those mm-hmm. extras are so important to put in and, you know, develop myself as a as a player and a person. Love that, love that. So where, where do you see private training going in the next two to five years then? Yeah, I think there'd be like, I think it's becoming more and more, um, you're, I think like at more like more main clubs will have it. I think it become more of a, you know, a mainstay academies and first team level. I think it's the individual training becoming a lot more prevalent if you like, as it becomes more, people will understand it more. Because what you, see, what you see is that all players are doing it anyway. Mm-hmm. And then all academies are waiting on, right? You know, and a lot of academies are doing that now. Now academies are offering it. You know, so they will come sign for us. We've got individual trainers. And all the top level players are doing extras, especially particularly the long, younger generation. Mm-hmm. So then, you know, clubs like to want, want to control everything. It's fair enough. So I think you'll just see them, they'll try and, you know, use their own and, you know, recruit their own individual trainers to work with the players. How many in-person players are you currently working with? Uh, it, it depends. But I mean, so obviously pre-season is the busiest time of year for me. So that's why I'm, one reason I'm going back to London next month. So I'll go back end of May and then, you know, the, the month, like the three or four weeks before the season starts is my busiest time of year. And I'll work with, you know, many players, pros before they go way back in for pre-season. Mm-hmm. And then um, that's the busiest time of year. That's, and then basically throughout the year, depending on timings, we'll try and get as many sessions in as possible. But it's a small, you know, portfolio of players, really. Mm-hmm. Okay, perfect. 
And what, what, what would you say to any, any trainer or other coach who's watching this or listening and they aren't running a business or they want to get into business? What would be the number one advice you would give them? Yeah, listen, like the same when I started my business, you know, I did a lot of research, listened to podcasts like this and like, you know, the, the entrepreneurial podcast. And, you know, and there's certain things that you've got to do, you know, you know, like any business, you know, same thing is like, you know, you, you have your social media, create your own podcast. Like I've got my podcast, you know, I've had many million listens, you know, you do like blogs and vlogs and that sort of thing. And it's to understand it is like, a, well, it is a full time job, obviously, but it's nonstop. So it's just content is king. You know, and the more content I put out, the more, you know, the more money the company makes is like a, it's, it's not, no, there's no sort of real secret to it. It's an obviously, but it's, the challenge is obviously getting good content out there. So just be, try and be, you know, use your initiative, try and be creative and you just got to grind at, grind, basically grind as hard as you can and try and work hard on everybody else. And while still remembering that you're a coach and it's about, you still got to provide, you know, you could be the greatest businessman in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a crap coach or a crap coach, don't forget the art of coaching is the most important thing. You know, be a student of the game, go and learn off other coaches, see what see what top level coaches are doing, see what happens and what it looks like at the highest level. Because obviously that's the end game, that's the end product, if you like. And then try and remember to create your sessions to try and deliver that. Yeah. So essentially, what what is the journey you take your client on in in your business? So when they join you, what's the end <laughs> result you're looking for? Yeah, so for instance, like a player comes to me, it's very much just, you know, just look at what position they play. So then my, my, my job is to basically try and look at their, look at their position, break that, that position down into microcosmic examples, what you're going to see in the game and what's going to make the difference in the game. That's what's key. We're practicing what's going to make the difference in the game. And generally that's around 1v1 dominations. So and my whole philosophy is built around 1v1 domination, the 1v1 duel. Can we build that into, like I say, game-like practices to really break it down? A bit like doing American sports. You really break that down into those essential little, those essential factors you're going to get and then really hammer those, those different movements, those different skills, those different tactics, those 1v1 tactics until the player can't get it one, wrong, if you like. And then that prepares them to make an impact in the game. Because that's the reality. You see, you know, you know, you can do all these little one-touch passing, pop, pop, random mannequin with daylight. Do you know what I mean? But the reality is that what really changes games is like, you know, to be able to break lines with the ball either at your feet or, you know, with a pass or running off the ball. And obviously sh shots and passes and shots mm. and four passes and crosses, that sort of thing, end product. So really break those down, focus on those things and those key areas, that position, and then just do it and hammer it and then they can't get it wrong. Perfect. Love that. Love that. So for, for a lot of trainers watching this and they want to add value to, to their local club, say, What's a couple of things that a trainer can do in order to build a partnership with a local a grassroots club and add value? Uh, it's difficult, really, because I think in you know pre you know before I had my personal football coach, you know my my contact with clubs was basically I was just coaching the clubs. So I mean, you got to try and think what like you know what are you providing? So what's your unique offering? What's your USP? If you're an individual trainer, maybe you're just going in there saying, can I, you know, I can offer my individual training services to your clubs, that sort of thing, potentially, you know. So you just got to see, be creative, see, you know, see what you can offer and, you know, take from there, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Love that. Perfect. So where, where do you see your business in the next five years from now then? Yeah, I think, look, for me, it's just about growing, getting into more clubs. Um I uh, want to like, uh, want to try and work, work with some federations as well. So we're working across the whole, you know, the development pyramid. Uh, keep on growing, you know. So we've got tens of thousands of players on there, or hundreds of thousands, potentially millions of players on there, on there. Because basically, making that like a freemium model, so it's free at the point of access. You can use it free. There's weekly challenges, you know, that sort of thing. And then we can upsell from that. Yeah. So then, you know, that's the real key. So, yeah, I mean, just keep on growing, really, keep on growing, and see where we can get it. Love that. Perfect. So last question for you. It's a bit of a personal one, but it's a two part. So first one is what does failure mean to you? And the second one, how important is taking risks in business? What does failure mean? Uh, listen, well, go start the second point first. Take you. I think you've got to take risks. Like, you know, in your career, in my career, I've always taken risks because, you know, you know fortune favours the braves, you know, that sort of thing. Are you dares wins rather than that you know, I mean it's that, those sorts of phrases I think if you don't you know don't if you don't step out of your comfort zone 
Mm-hmm. And then what's the point really of life in anything really? So you've got to take risks in whatever you do in terms of life or your career, because you've got to, because other people are doing it and you've got to think of what's going to, what's going to set you apart from all these other, all these other people. Do you know what I mean? Everyone's mm-hmm. got an Instagram page now. Everyone's got, you know, those videos and then doing sessions, blah, blah, blah. Do you know what I mean? So what's going to set you, you know, from what's going to se- separate you and keep you above the curve in terms of what's a fate. I think fate is that it's fate is not taking the risk for me do you mm-hmm. know what I mean being that steady and that's what I say to players as well when I'm training players I say you know if you're going in there and you're the steady Eddie and you're not prepared where to we're not willing to go and implement what we've been doing and take risks and try and do that you're not going to get noticed so whether mm-hmm. you're a college player you know your school player your first team level player you've got to be able to be you've got to be courageous as you are mm-hmm. in business or in, in every life because otherwise you know you're not going to be able to get that you know pot of gold at the end of the rainbow or whatever where you want to put it love that love that well so thank you thank you so much for for taking the time out to jump on here share, share with us a bit of the, your journey your business now if there's any coach that wants to get in contact with you uh, wants to either follow your business or reach out to you what's the best way to do that yeah so i'm on uh, instagram my football coach one twitter my football coach my personal football coach.com check out the website the app download the app for free you can email me directly Saul at mypersonalfootballcoach.com. Always willing to chat with coaches and give any advice if, uh, if they want it. Perfect. All right. Excellent. Well, good luck with everything in the future. And I hope to, to connect again with you uh, coming up. Cheers, mate. Thanks for having me.